Happy Sunday, brothers and sisters, and welcome to our service in the style of Tze at Bethany. We are longing to be present with you, and I know many of you missed the chapel services when we could be in person. I'm recording this now in the worship center in advance, and I don't know uh, what the uh, the state of the nation is going to be, the state of the world is going to be by the time this shows, but I do know that as you're watching this, it is Pentecost, and I trust in the Spirit and encourage you to trust in the Spirit as well for however it is. God God needs us to, to live and move and have our being in the world. At Bethany, we do that in a certain way. We do it by leading others to experience God's love, know Jesus Christ, and grow in his image. And I want to encourage you, wherever you are, whatever you feel safe doing, to make sure that you don't feel thwarted by any pandemic protocol. But instead, trusting God, God will make a way for you to share the gifts that he has blessed you with to share in the world. Ways that you can do that, first, by giving glory to God. You are in worship with us. We want to encourage you to check in at that link that you see on your screen. Let us know you're present with us. Share any updates in your contact information as well. We love to be lifting you in prayer. So visit our prayer page and turn in your prayer requests or find out ways that you can be praying for others as well. Be exploring our website for uh, worship opportunities, for different ministries that are opening up for groups that you can connect with. We are doing a lot of things in person. We have in-person services of worship uh, at least twice on Sunday mornings and often on a Sunday evening. We also have a lot of Sunday school classes and other small groups that are meeting in person on campus. So look for ways that you can be engaging as soon as you feel safe doing so and welcome home. Also want to encourage you as the Spirit leads you to uh, share your tithes and your offerings, and you can do that at the giving link. Now I'm going to invite you to close your eyes and help yourself to center and be present in our worship time together. Let us pray. Holy God, we call upon you now, knowing that you are already present with us. As we seek you, God, help us to be more present with you. Open our minds that we may have a greater understanding of your presence with us and your word for us. Open our ears to hear your voice speaking our names and calling us to you. Open our eyes to look around and see others, our brothers and sisters in the world, as you would see them with eyes of love and compassion and mercy. And open our hearts, God, to pour out your love to all whom we meet so we may give glory to God and shine his light We pray this in his holy name. Amen. As we come to this reading from the Gospel of John, I invite you to close your eyes 
and just take it in. I'll read through the passage a few times, and I want you to let God's word wash over you as a gift from God to you this day. Hear this word from God. When the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. Hear this word again from Jesus to his followers about the spirit that is coming into the world. Keep your eyes closed and allow yourself to visualize what that might look like. Hear this passage and listen for a particular word or phrase that catches your attention or maybe an image that God paints in your mind's eye that is for you, his message for you this day. When the advocate comes whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. And again, as you hear this word from the Gospel of John a final third time, acknowledge what it is that you have received. Return that back to God. Give God thanks for his message for you. When the Advocate comes whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. Sisters and brothers, as we come to this time of prayer, I want to encourage you again to visit Bethany's website and go to the prayer page and share with us how we can be lifting you up for a blessing or in need that you have. Know that God is present and listening. So I invite you yourself to listen. Close your eyes so that you're not distracted by what's around you. Open your mind and your ears to listen to God even as you are speaking out to God in whatever way you want, those concerns you have, your cares in the world, or giving thanks to God for the blessings that you know through him. 
Let's pray together with him now. Come, Holy Spirit, as we pray. Be with us, abiding in our spirits, so that we may be filled with your presence of compassion in Christ. Fill us anew, God, with the creation of Christ within us, the ways that we may bear him in this world. Lord, you see how much we struggle. You see the ways that we are not an obedient people and how we struggle each in our own small lives. Hear us, God, as we cry out to you, your people crying out to you for help, help in the ways our bodies have been broken or ill, and the same, God, for our loved ones. We lift up to you in our spoken words or in our thoughts so many family members and dear ones whom we see struggling around us. God, we pray for your healing presence to move all through our communities, bearing us up and recreating our lives once more to be healthy and whole. We ask this same, God, for the relationships that we have with one another. Help us, Lord, in spirit to connect with each other's spirit, to see with our brothers and sisters around us that they too are your sons and daughters and beloved by you. Show us how we can love them as well. Put within us as an attitude of, of mercy and forgiveness so that we may be reconciled with them where we have been broken by the world. Heal us, God, in the way of your kingdom so that it is not the kingdom of the world that we bear, but it is a promise of the salvation that we know through Christ. God, guide us in the ways that we do not know how to move forward where we see strife and where we see fighting and where we see the brokenness of the world around us, God, in our homes and workplaces, in our schools and communities, throughout our nation and around the world. Lord, you know in our minds that we are naming specific situations to you, those things that weigh heavy on our hearts and lead us to lose hope and despair. Restore that hope in each one of us, God, or send to us, brothers and sisters in Christ, who will bear us up in their faith when we struggle in our own. Put before each of us, God, a vision of us united as one family, one body together under Christ as our head. God, we know that this work is too much for us to do on our own, and so we give you thanks for the sending of your presence through the Holy Spirit, that spirit that will whisper truth into our minds, that will whisper strength into our hearts, and that will whisper courage into our words and our actions. Let us shy away from speaking more of the world into the world and speaking and living more of the Christ, the one who has brought us together now and in whose words we pray as we join our voices together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
my family in Christ. I am reading to you now from Acts out of the second chapter, verses 1 through 12, selected verses. And as you hear these words, as you hear this passage, I want you to let this question be your guide. What does this mean? The passage will end with that question, what does this mean? And for us, that answer comes with the questions, why was this story told? Who were among the first to hear it? Why is this moment in time captured for all ages to come, for all who study the word of God? And what's important for us to learn from it? What does it mean? Breathe that in and breathe that out. Allow your bodies to be settled and still. Close your eyes and hear this word from God that we need to understand for ourselves today. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? I invite you in this quiet moment to meditate on that question. But consider, what does Pentecost mean? Pentecost, this word that is translated 50th, as in 50 days. For Jews, a holy day of Pentecost occurs 50 days after the Passover. For Christians, Pentecost is 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus. What could be so important about this 50-day period for us? What does it mean? In the Old Testament, 50 days after the Hebrew people were delivered from Egypt, we are taught that they received the law from God on Mount Sinai by Jewish tradition. What is God giving to the people on the new Pentecost in this reading from Acts? It has been 50 days from Easter, from the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What have you done in those 50 days? What has God been preparing you for And what is God giving you, God's people, now on this holy Pentecost? Scripture tells us that this Pentecost brings the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Imagine this event, this experience, a sound like a violent wind, split tongues of fire, a tongue on each of the people gathered there. What does this mean? The Bible in this story from Acts talks of they, they who were all gathered in one place, they who were all filled by the Spirit, they who all spoke in other languages. They are set apart here from the gathered crowd. 
Who are they? Who do you see here in this sacred moment? Why are they special? These Galileans, these followers of Jesus Christ, were speaking of God's deeds of power in several languages. In your own language, in your own native tongue, what do you imagine those stories were? What stories of God's deeds of power have you witnessed, have you learned, have you to share with others? Hear this word again from God for us as we observe Pentecost ourselves. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? How is it that we hear each of us in our own native language In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? When was the last time you, my sister or my brother, when was the last time you were amazed and perplexed by something God did? What did that mean for you? How have you experienced the Holy Spirit? As an advocate? As a bearer of truth? What is your sense of the Spirit entering your life? As you have been filled with the Holy Spirit, how did you respond to that experience? The Spirit comes to testify to God and to guide us. Have you allowed yourself to be led? invite each of you where you are now and any time that you feel a little remembrance of this time of worship to spend time in prayer invoking the Holy Spirit. Seek to speak as the Spirit would have you to speak. Seek to think in a godly way. Seek to be in the world acting according to the way of Jesus who sent the Spirit to guide your life in Him.
I wish each and every one of you a blessed Pentecost and encourage you to seek ways, all the ways that God is pouring the Spirit into your life, God's Spirit abiding in you and inviting you to do the same, to abide in the Holy Spirit. By the Holy Spirit, all of our spirits are connected with one another, even with, when we're not in person with each other. Be encouraged, be challenged, be equipped by all that the Spirit has to bring into your life that is meant for you to offer in this world. Seek your brothers and sisters in Christ for affirmation and also for them to come alongside you in that effort. And when you are not with them, know that God is ever present with you. God who is present with you as the Father who created you, as the Son who saves you, and as the Holy Spirit who will equip you every step of the way. Go in peace.